thought I'd do up a quick video to show you how to play World War II games online using Vassal. Uh, so I created a module for Vassal, but the first thing you need to do, of course, then is, is download Vassal. So um, if you go to vassalengine.org, uh, it will present you with a page like this, and usually it will detect your operating system and give you the download link for it. So I'm running a Mac here, so it gives me a link for the, the Mac OS X to download that. And all Vassal is is uh, a client uh, tool that allows you to load up different modules and then once your friend at the other end has Vassal also loaded with the same module you can both go online and you can play games. Um, basically all Vassal does is synchronizes the movement of pieces uh, allows you to simultaneously see dice rolls and other information to be exchanged and there's a whole range of different modules that have been created for Vassal uh, you can see some latest news on the right hand side here mentioning you know the Star Wars X-Wing game and so on uh, but the Vassal module I'm going to be talking about is better lucky than good. So if you want to play the World War II games, there, there are a number of different options, but this one is specifically designed for individual models. Uh, so each trooper is a single base. Um, and it's designed for platoon and you know maybe company level games played on a six foot by four foot kind of board. So if you want to download the module, go to farforway.org. On the left hand side, you'll see this better lucky than good link. Um, Click it there and there's a link for downloading the Vassal module. So the module here I kind of occasionally updated with little bits and bobs, um, but you'll see it, it linked here. Don't worry about other things, you know, you see it's mentioning early French here, I'll, I'll describe that a little bit later. There are instructions on this page on how to load up the module. Um, it's, it's really quite straightforward, but I'll talk that through a little bit now. So when you launch Vassal, it gives you this dialog that's going to pop up which shows you the different modules that you have loaded. So I have already installed Better Lucky Than Good, and there's a Vassal 40k one here as well. So in order to add a new module, which I don't need to do, but you go to File, Open Module. So the module that you would have downloaded from my page, that comes in a zip archive. If you unpack that, inside that there's a .vmod file, and that is the module itself. So if you open Module, navigate to where that file is, so for example, here's when I opened the 40k, remember the location. It's this type of file that you'd be opening, so a vmod file. So I'm not going to do that now because it's already added in there. When you launch it, it might ask you to create a, a username and password. Honestly, they're, they're not useful for anything, so don't worry about what you put in there. Uh, and then the module will launch. So let's launch the module itself. So I've double-clicked that. And here it's launching into the module. It gives me some options, you know, start a new game offline, look for a game online, and load a saved game. So we start a new game offline because there are a few pre-built-in maps here. So if we go in here, there are various different setups. There are empty tables for grass, desert, and snow, then a few different ones. So let's look at the North Africa airfield one. You want to join as player one or player two if you're going to be playing a game. It doesn't really matter if you've already joined a map online and somebody tries to join that game, they'll be given the other option. So if you've selected player one, they will be offered observer or player two. The only point where this matters is it allows you to load up pre-existing armies, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. So I've got player one, we finish, and loads up here. So here we have the, the play surface. So this is a map that's been created using this module. Uh, the individual pieces are terrain pieces that are discoverable within the terrain uh, box here. And you can add more terrain if you want. So, for example, if we wanted a building here, looks a little bit small there compared to the, the Stukas, um, you can add a building. But I'm, I'm going to remove that so I can delete it using a keyboard shortcut. If you right-click on any component in the game, you get the list of shortcuts available for it. There are also models available up here. So if we look at Deutsch Afrika Corps, we have a whole range of troopers, so carbine-armed uh, troops, a pistol-armed troop, Panzer Shreks and so on, and then some vehicles with uh, a variety of different uh, capabilities. Same story, just drag them down onto the surface, and that's now an available playing piece. There are a number of shortcuts then for using vehicles. So as I mentioned, if there's anything you want to know, you kind of right click on a vehicle, it gives you a list of the possibilities. So there's a whole set of things to you know add numbers to them if you needed numbers, add additional information. So if you're keeping track of ammo, for example, you can have uh, information overlaid on it. So we could say there's, you know, five armor piercing shells and there are four HE shells, for example, if you're playing something like um, Battle Group. And that piece of information is there. And you can see that that's quite small. So you can zoom in at any point with the control up on the uh, control bar there and you can see that, that information on the tank. To move the tank then, it's fairly straightforward. Arrow keys, 
turn it around, so I'm using the left and right arrow keys to turn the tank. And when you press the forward and back keys, it moves it one inch at a time. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, and get it into position. You can also just pick it up and move it. And if you want to measure particular things, there are range rulers available. So if I want to measure across to this gap, you drag a range ruler and it gives you uh, the distance in inches. So as I said, this, this board should be six foot by four foot. When I close the models at the top, you just hit that models button and that will close that there. So this is me just playing with the, around with the module locally. If you want to go online, see the two arrows in the top left corner here. That'll give you this dialog here in the top right. And you can go online. So as you can see, it's only me in this main room here. And I can create a room for the game and you, you need to do that. You can't play games in the main room. So it could be uh, O versus you know, S if I'm gonna play my friend Steve. I've created a room there. So when Steve now loads up this module and he decides to play a game online, and if he then goes into this room, uh, it'll automatically synchronize what I'm seeing here with what he's seeing there. He would see that tank, for example, and then any other pieces that get added to the board. Dice rolling is fairly straightforward. We have a whole set of uh, dice commands up here. So if you want a single dice, press the 1d6. Hey, I rolled a six. And again, an opponent who's synchronizing with this online would see that roll appear in, in the same manner. There are shortcuts for rolling dice. So shift and a number will roll that number of dice. So shift three rolls 3d6, shift five rolls 5d6. If for some reason you need another type of dice that's not included here, um, you can roll a number of dice with a variety of different sides and you can add and subtract and do all sorts of things and you get a total. Uh, so, you know, there, there's kind of this fairly flexible dice roller. Other components you might need in the game are tokens. Uh, so I've placed them in with the models in the counters area here. So there's the chain of command counters, you know, so you've, you've pinned and using the letters B and M, you can synchronize, sync through these. Again, if you right click, it shows you those controls, change up, change down, B and M here. So just like a playing piece, pinned, um, Overwatch, Tactical, and so on. There's one for Battle Group. Uh, there are a variety of different smoke markers. You have jump off points. Uh, you have dice, which are quite useful for different things. I find if you're playing Chain of Command, it's quite nice to visually see your dice rather than trying to remember you know, your command dice. So usually what I do is have a set of dice out. And if you select several things, you can operate on them at once. And there's a command for the dice to roll them. Simply press the uh, letter R and they, they've now been rolled. So we can see, okay, well, a six, that's no use. And a five, that'll add to my chain of command dice. And then, you know, ordering senior leaders and ordering a team, you know, so you can, you can kind of organize yourself and, and move the dice around as you do different things. There's also scatter dice. Sometimes you need a, a random, just so same idea, just R will give you a random direction and a random side on that dice. So fairly straightforward stuff. And they're the basics for getting going in a game itself. So you've got dice if you want to roll them on the surface. You have um, different things. You have a whole variety of different counters. Uh, but there are other more advanced things you might want to do. So earlier I joined as player one. So if I want to load a pre-existing army and several platoons for chain of command ship with the module, I simply hit the load army button here. And that army will appear in the player one area here up on the top because I joined as player one. So if I go to load army, I've created an alias into that platoons list. So in the zip archive you download from my website, you get several different uh, armies. Uh, so if we have a look in here, we can decide to uh, load up maybe a British rifle platoon from North Africa. And you'll see a message appeared in the dialogue uh, there. It's successfully loaded uh, models into player one's window. So if I open this up, you see a whole set of models. So models and some useful counters. I've marked the senior leaders with kind of a red thing around their base and, and the squad leaders, section leaders with blue around theirs. And if you want to drag out a whole uh, section, just drag them out onto the board. You can use the arrows to move them around or you can drag the models to where you need them to be. So again, if I wanted to just select the rifle team and I wanted to reorder them slightly for when I'm deploying them. And you know, get them all in the kind of order that you want. And they're now ready to, to play on, on the tabletop. So they're the basics. Um, from there, you're, you're playing the game. Um, 
as I said, anything you want to know about, you know, just right-click on a model, it gives you information. So if you want to know, see how to delete it, there's Control D. If you want to copy a model or clone it, Control C. So all of the commands necessary to, to kind of play out a game. And that's it. So that gets you from installing the module through to playing the, uh, the basic game. Uh, I'll do another video later on talking a little bit around how you create your own maps and how you kind of layer in the terrain and some considerations you might have when making your maps. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to play some games, uh, whether face-to-face -face or online. Uh, but this tool will certainly help you play those games online. Okay, take care.